This week we're taking a look at the basics on the leader of the female Autobots and Optimus Prime's one and only, the first, the best, Elita One. Elita One was an original character created for the Transformers animated series, who appeared in two episodes of the show's second season in 1985. In her youth, she was known as Ariel, but after she and her boyfriend Orion Pax were gunned down by Megatron in a raid on the energy warehouse where they worked, they were reconstructed by the Autobot sage Alpha Trion into the first of a new generation of battle-ready Autobots who could fight back against the Decepticons. Orion became Optimus Prime, and his schematics were used as a base to rebuild Ariel into Elita One. Elita had the special power to freeze time, a dangerous ability of last resort that drained her life force when used. After millions of years of war, Elita apparently died in a Decepticon attack just before Optimus and his Autobots left Cybertron. But in reality, she survived and went underground, forming a guerrilla cell of female Autobots to fight the Decepticons on Cybertron in Optimus's absence. In the present day, a botched raid on the Decepticons' energy storehouse resulted in Elita's capture, and Optimus, learning his long-lost love was still alive, immediately surrendered to the Decepticons in return for her release. Elita used her time-freezing power to rescue Optimus, leaving herself on the brink of death, but Optimus took her to Alpha Trion, who supervised the Autobot leader in performing a transfusion of his own energy that saved Elita's life. Though the two were happy to be reunited, they soon had to part once more, with Optimus returning to Earth while Elita remained to continue the fight on Cybertron. As a cartoon original character not represented in the toy line, Elita dwelled in relative obscurity for years, with no appearances in other media and no merchandise, except for a small model kit released in Japan in 1996. She almost got to make a return to the spotlight in Dreamwave Productions comic books in 2004, in which she would have been an agent of the alien Quintessons. But just as she made her appearance, the comic was cancelled after the company went out of business. It would be 2007 before she finally got a chance to shine once more, when she appeared in the exclusive comic book available at that year's official Transformers convention, BotCon. Set within the world of the original Marvel comic, this story's version of Elita was a martial artist of mysterious origins with light-bending armor. Elita's appearance in the comic was based on the Decepticon speedboat Thunderblast from 2005's Transformers Cybertron, a figure that two years later would be recolored to create an actual toy of Elita released as an exclusive at BotCon 2009. However, that wasn't the first toy of Elita One. That honor belonged to the figure released in the 2007 live-action movie toy line. A recolor of the Autobot motorcycle RC from 2004's Transformers Energon, the movie universe incarnation of Elita was characterized as the first female Transformer, a cunning and talented sharpshooter who could generate an energy field that caused her opponents to overheat. She didn't appear in the film itself, but did show up in tie-in comic books, with her appearance modified to make her look more like the original cartoon character. Elita made the jump to the big screen in the 2009 sequel, Revenge of the Fallen, but it was a confusing debut. The film introduced a new trio of female Autobot motorcycles, but it wasn't clear from the film who these characters were. Some sources said that the three bots were all components of RC, whose single mind controlled all three bodies. But others, like the movie Toyline, presented the bikes as separate individuals, three sisters, the purple Elita One, the red RC, and the blue Chromia. Tie-in comics from IDW Publishing would clear up the matter and explain how Elita had acquired this new form. They detailed how Elita and Chromia were killed by the Decepticons, and had their remains acquired by the mad scientist Flatline for use in his experiments into reanimation. Flatline captured RC and used her spark to reignite those of her sisters, bringing them back to life in new bodies. 
No, they were one life force animating three bots. Still individuals, but mentally bonded together, sharing thoughts and feelings. The comics would also depict Alita as having once been close to Optimus Prime, until the violence of the war consumed them both and drove them apart, eventually leading to Alita's second and final death at the hands of Shockwave. In the years between the two movies, Elita also returned to TV screens in the Transformers animated cartoon. This version of the character was a cadet in the Autobot Academy, who had the special ability to download and copy the powers of other Transformers. When an off-the-books mission with fellow cadets Optimus and Sentinel to an alien planet of giant spiders went wrong, Elita attempted to use her power on the creatures, only to wind up irreversibly mutating herself into a monstrous techno-organic form. Mistakenly believed dead by her friends, the abandoned and resentful Elita renamed herself Black Arachnia and joined up with the Decepticons. Her efforts to cure herself would lead to her crossing paths with Optimus again years later on Earth, their tragic history and feelings for one another complicating the Autobot leader's attempts to stop her harmful schemes. Elita would continue to have some small roles in more niche media over the next few years, before eventually returning to the forefront in a big way in the pages of IDW Publishing's comic books in 2015. IDW's version of Elita One was a fearsome and militant warrior who valued truth and honesty above all else, and who had no connection to Optimus Prime. She served as the captain, or first one, of the Titan Carcer, a huge city spaceship transformer who acted as a living prison for the evil Prime Liege Maximo. When a fleet of zombie titans attacked Cybertron, Elita refused to allow Carcer to transform to fight them for fear it would allow Liege Maximo to escape, and when Windblade attempted to disobey her and activate Carcer, Elita even went so far as to kill her titan to prevent it by destroying his brain. Furious over the debacle, Elita demanded free elections for Cybertron so that she could make a play for leadership of the planet, but Windblade wound up defeating her at the polls. Soon after, when the planet-eating Unicron attacked Cybertron, Elita sacrificed her life to buy the populace time to evacuate, going out in a blaze of glory by piloting the flaming remains of Carcer on a crash course straight into Unicron's face. Elita One hit Toy Store shelves again in 2018 as part of the Power of the Primes toy line. Now sporting a jet alternate mode, this Elita was a combiner who could link up with any four compatible figures from the series to form the giant Elita Infinite. Combine her with her fellow female Autobots and she becomes the mighty Orthia. Slowly but surely, Elita One has gone from a once obscure and overlooked character to one who now enjoys regular appearances in Transformers media. Regular enough that there have been four different official ways to spell her name. Currently, she appears in the pre-war setting of IDW's new rebooted comic book universe, as leader of the Ascenticon Guard, the armed forces of the political movement led by Megatron that's destined to become the Decepticons. What this means for Alita's future in this new universe, we'll just have to keep reading to find out. And those are the basics on Elita One. When did you first encounter her, and what Elita story is your favourite? Sound off in the comments, give the like button a click, and make sure to subscribe to learn more about the world of the Transformers.